Bamboo Lab H2C Unboxing. Let's go. I recommend that you do not cut the straps nor throw anything away. Keep the box, keep the foam, keep every screw. If you ever need to return this printer, you will need all of it. Speaking from experience. And here's the reveal. Once the tapes and outer padding are off, the real task will begin. Cutting, unscrewing, untying, and carefully persuading the packaging to let go. This has flipped over the years. Early 3D printers were difficult to assemble. Today, the harder part is dismantling the shipping protection. If you're careful, and you should be, this can easily take one to two hours. At this stage, I zoom in for a first proper look at the Vortex system. This is one of the defining features of the H2C, so it's worth pausing here. There are several zip ties holding the gantry firmly in place, including one partially blocked by the extruder in this shot. Rather than relying purely on foam, the motion system has been mechanically locked. That reduces shock loading on bearings and rails during shipping. It's straightforward engineering, and it makes sense. The accessories box came away with the top cover, not intentionally on my part, but it does highlight how tightly everything is packaged. With the box and outer packaging fully unpacked, the printer is now in place on the desk and it's time to begin removal of the internal packaging materials and the AMS Pro. This is a glass door and the protective plastic here shows careful consideration. Glass can be unforgiving during transport and this packaging clearly reflects that. These screws are securing the AMS for shipping. This level of protection doesn't feel like an afterthought. I unpack the top glass next, followed by the additional screws fixing the AMS to the main printer frame. Once removed, the AMS lifts away, revealing more foam securing it at the rear.
Next are the bed holding screws. They're slightly difficult to unscrew, but they serve an important purpose. Editing makes this look easy. In practice, these screws took some time to remove. I was genuinely glad to see a full set of nozzles included for the Vortex system. If I were choosing sizes myself, I'd go with mostly 0.4 millimeter nozzles, five of them, and just one of the 0.6 millimeters. I don't expect to use the 0.2 millimeter nozzle much, but you never know. Next is the power safety key. It's simple, but it adds an extra layer of safety in addition to the main power switch. Now it's time to set up the AMS Pro and the spool holder. The AMS Pro has even more packaging foam. Before inserting the PTFE tube, I will just take the opportunity to connect the power cable along with the AMS power and communication cable. The PTFE tube is inserted into the printer at this point. The instruction says to push it in until it can't move forward. I'm choosing not to cut the tube at this stage, although in a final installation you would normally trim it to length. Here's the spool holder. If only they had designed the printer with a dedicated spool holder for TPU on the opposite side, that would have made TPU printing easier. There's also desiccant to install, more tape to remove, and another round of checks.
and a final check. Yes, of course. Some more protection foam. I had missed them when removing the others. At this stage, I actually shouldn't have fitted the nozzles yet. Something I found out later. The initial setup expects the Vortex system to be empty. The printer powers on. And that sound did catch me off guard again. More on that in a later video. The initial calibration process, which includes motor noise calibration, vibration compensation, auto bed leveling, and nozzle offset calibration, is mostly sped up and skipped here. The initial vortex setup routine runs with all nozzles removed, and these movements are shown in real time. They're fast. As many reviewers have noted, the AMS remains the slowest part of the whole nozzle changing system. With the nozzles installed, I run a read-all sequence, again shown in real time. Filament is loaded, and we move on to the first sample prints. Those prints deserve their own video, so I'll stop here. This video wasn't about unboxing or 3D prints. It was about first impressions, engineering intent, and how seriously Bamboo treats shipping, safety, and setup. One thing I do want to call out before ending, the Vortex system. I genuinely like it. It's fast, it's confident, and it feels like a properly engineered solution rather than a gimmick. Suffice to add, I finally got a replacement for the Anchor Make V6, a failed Kickstarter project. Watching the Vortex system run in real time is impressive, and it's clearly central to what makes this machine different. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll see how it performs when it actually starts printing.